Okay. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this early morning, well, not really an early morning, uh, a late morning slash early lunchtime talk from the Cambridge Biosoc. Today, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker straight from uh, Mishima, Japan, which is at the footsteps of Mount Fuji. Uh, Professor Kazuhiro Maeshima, who will be talking to us about unraveling the secrets of the genome behaviors really like, uh, not just basing off of established knowledge and established models that we have so far. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, all of our sponsors who make Biosoc Talks possible. I'd like to thank uh, CRISPR Biotech Engineering uh, a platform working on educating uh, educating people on the CRISPR biotech uh, technologies, as well as BitBio, uh, a startup that works on uh, synthetic biology, especially in the context of human cells. So, without further ado, I'd like to pass over to Professor Mashima. Okay. So, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Christoph for giving me opportunity uh, to talk about our work. So I'm national. Well, I'm working in National Institute of Genetics in Mishima, Japan. So Mishima is quite small, but very nice city. So just one hour from Tokyo by Shinkansen uh, Super Express train, and we can see very beautiful Mount Fuji uh, from our campus. So if the COVID nineteen a situation gets better, so please visit NIG uh, to see uh, nice our colleagues and uh, to see the beautiful Mount Fuji. Okay. Our long term question is pretty simple uh, How is a long strand of genomic DNA organized in the cell? So, this is a sort of a classical textbook view. And DNA is wrapped on core histones and form nucleosome structure. And uh, this is my nucleosome. And for a long time, uh, the nucleosome had to be assumed to be folded into this very regular 30 nanometer fiber, a solenoidal or a zigzag, whatever. And for the helical folding, like this. However, uh, last 10 years, so quite many evidences, including our cryo-EM study and exoskeleton analysis demonstrated that chromatin is more irregular and variable and should be very dynamic. We publish a series of papers and now so more and more evidences to support this concept is available from many labs. But Still, you might think why we can see the 30 nanometer chromatin fiber, especially in the textbook. For example, if we, you open the molecular biology of the cell, uh, fifth edition, uh, figure 422, you see very nice fibers like this. And figure 474, this is even our picture, a uh, cross section of my chromosome have very nice uh, uh, 30 nanometer chromatin fiber as radial loop. But why we can see these fibers? So because uh, these are under low salt condition. So a low concentration of cations. I'll explain the reason. So chromatin is negatively charged long polymers and without cations, they repulse to each other. Okay, please look at me. So repulse to each other and extend it like this. And in the water, so chromatin is highly extended uh, like beads on a string. And with low concentration of cations, uh, this negative charge was partially uh, screened and this departure decreased, okay? And then, so one nucleosome can interact to its neighbor 
like this. And then can form starting aromatic commodity fiber very easily. Okay. But with more cations, and this negative charge were completely uh, neutralized and no repulsion. And then uh, one nucleosome. So one nucleosome can interact to any nucleosome, not necessarily to its neighbor. And then fibers are more interdigitated like this, and then cannot form certain aromatic fiber anymore and forming uh, condensate uh, without the fiber structure. So we call this uh, condensate, so melted polymer, and some people call this the sea of nucleosomes. Okay, and as collaboration with Jeff Hansen, so we demonstrated this scheme uh, using 12 nucleosome arrays. So synthetic nucleosomes, okay? And we published this in 2016. And we think uh, this structure, it's the structure, chromatin structure in the cell. And now, so text of chromatin model is updating. So please update your model figure too. And currently, the chromatin uh, in the cell is assumed to have this kind of hierarchy. So nucleosome and loop and domain and compartment and chromosome in the territory. But uh, the most important point is the chromatin is very dynamic and flexible. Okay? So in my talk, so I'll show you dynamic chromatin behavior in living human cells. Chromatin dynamics uh, is related to many aspects of cellular functions. Here, uh, I would uh, focus on the interplay between chromatin dynamics and transcription. And generally, so people might think if the transcription is on and chromatin is rather open and uh, more mobile. On the other hand, transcription is off, uh, chromatin is more condensed and less dynamic. So this is sort of a general view, but uh, is this view really right? My former PhD student, Ryosuke Nagashima-kun, uh, got interested in this question. Then we decided to address this uh, using a single nucleosome image. Uh, for this, so first, uh, we made a cell line uh, expressing H2B halota. Okay. So one of the core histone H2B uh, was conjugated with halotag and express uh, this in the cell, uh, RP1 cells. Uh, this is pretty normal one. And so this H2B halo was uh, incorporated into the nucleo nucleosome. And as you may know, uh, halotag can be labeled with halotag ligand TMR. Then we can uh, label individual nucleosome. So this H2B halo TMR uh, was uh, localized not only euchromatic regions, but also uh, dappy dense heterochromatic regions like this. So these showed very similar patterns. And suggesting H2B halo is incorporated genome-wide, stochastically. And for single nucleosome imaging, so we need the very sparse labeling. And for this, uh, we treated the cell with very, very low concentration of TMR ligand. And uh, using oblique illumination microscope, uh, which can illuminate very limited area in the cell with very low background. 
yeah, we succeeded uh, to see the nucleosome motion. So I hope uh, you can see uh, many dots are fluctuating in Zoom movie. And these dots uh, show a single step photobridging. So each dot uh, disappears suddenly. Okay, suggesting each dot represent a single nucleosome. Okay. And we determine the precise center of the, these dots by Gaussian fitting and it tracked their motion and made trajectories like this. And based on these trajectories, we calculated a mean square displacement, MSD, as showing how the nucleosome move. As you see, uh, the plots were very fitted with a subdiffusive curve like this. And uh, when we fix the cell with formaldehyde, uh, nucleus of motion severely suppressed, like this red line. Okay, and we succeeded the single nucleus of imaging. Then we treated the cell with a, a transcription inhibitor, alpha manichi, so RNA pol 2 specific inhibitor. Okay. I hope uh, you can see the difference. Actually, uh, which cells showed greater nucleus of motion? So here, so I have to mention one thing. So we can see only the H2B halo incorporated into nucleus. And we cannot see a free H2B halo. So we can now, uh, we can see only nucleus. Uh, actually, so right one is alpha managing treated one. So chromatin motion looks increased with the transcription inhibition. And MSD plot showed alpha managing treated one and alpha uh, DRB. This is another transcription inhibitor, both increase chromatin motion like this. And in this situation, um, nucleotide derivative EU incorporation showed uh, RNA synthesis is severely suppressed, okay? Almost no signal. So these results suggest uh, that general uh, view, which I mentioned in the beginning, is not necessar necessarily right. Not always right. Okay, then what happened? We thought RNA pole 2 might constrain chromatin motion like this. Then we examine the amount of active RNA pole 2 on the chromatin. And for this, so we, we focused on the uh, serine 5 phosphorylation of C terminal domain of RNA pole 2, uh, which is a good transcription initiation marker. Okay. And immunostaining of this serine 5 phosphorylation showed the signal decreased in the inhibitor treated cells like this. And we found inverse correlation between the amount of active RNA pole 2 and chromatin nucleus of motion. So, uh, chromatin bound active RNA pole 2 seems to be critical to constrain chromatin motion. Okay? So, this means more active RNA pole 2 on chromatin, so can constrain more. So to test this idea, uh, we used another uh, transcription inhibitor, actinomycin D, which can store uh, RNA pole 2 on the chromatin. And this inhibit uh, transcription, and as we expected, 
actinomycin-D decrease uh, chromatin motion. So more active RNA poles can constrain more. To, confirm, to further confirm our notion, uh, we performed a series of control experiments. Uh, first control experiment is RNA pol one inhibitor treatment. So RNA pol one works in nucleoli, uh, limited area in the nucleus, and for ribosomal RNA transcription. So this uh, specific inhibitor, CX5461 treatment, showed the, uh, the signal of uh, EU incorporation suppressed in the nuclear, nuclear regions. Okay, so this RNA synthesis is suppressed in these regions. And the inhibitor worked, uh, but uh, nucleus of motion did not change. So RNA pole 1 is not involved in the constraint of chromatin motion. A second uh, control experiment is splicing inhibitor treatment. A splicing complex is really large and often associated with active RNA pole 2, uh, especially during elongation process. And this splicing inhibitor treatment uh, did not uh, inhibit uh, pre-messenger RNA synthesis but severely suppressed uh, mess, uh, spliced product like this. Okay? And the inhibitor worked, but again, nucleus of motion did not change significantly. The last, uh, the last control experiment is looking at the heterochromatic regions, uh, which is quite free from uh, active RNA pole 2 and transcriptionally less active. And for this, uh, we look at the nuclear periphery, uh, which is heterochromatin rich region, okay? Nuclear bottom surface. And I'll show you the movie. I hope you can see the difference. Uh, right one is the nuclear periphery, nuclear bottom surface. The dots don't move so much. And chromatin motion looks suppressed. Okay, so then we treated the cell uh, with the heter uh, with the, uh, transcription inhibitor and look at the nuclear bottom surface. Please look at these dot lines. So black ones control and pink ones alpha managing treated one. So they they don't change so much. Okay. So transcription inhibition did not affect the nucleus of motion in the heterochromatic re heterochromatin re region. Okay. So active RNA pole two plays a major role in the constraining process. Okay. And so far, uh, we have used many uh, inhibitors, but use of inhibitors uh, may have a risk for indirect effects. And to see direct involvement of RNA pole 2 uh, in the in the constraining process. So we performed rapid depletion of RNA pol 2 by a oxygen inducible degron system, uh, AID, uh, which was invented by Masato Kanemaki san at our institute, NIG. As you may know, so AID is a great system uh, with oxygen addition, tagged protein was rapidly depleted with proteasome pathway, okay? And so in our case, uh, largest subunit of RNA pol 2 RPV1, was tagged with uh, AID domain, 
and also uh, M clover to monitor depletion efficiency. Okay. And this system was inserted in uh, human DLD1 cells expressing H to be hollow. And thanks to AID system, just one hour after oxygen addition, so RPB1, uh, RNA pole 2 disappeared. And because of motion increase like this. And after washing out the oxygen, uh, several hours later, RPB1, uh, RNA pole 2 came back and nucleus of motion decreased to the original level. So active RNA pole 2 constrained chromatin motion. Okay. And to further confirm our notion in more physiological context, G0 cells, uh, which is transcriptionally less active, okay? And we induce uh, our RP1 cells into G0 state by serum depletion. After uh, three days and seven days, serum depletion and the proliferation marker KI67 positive cell decrease and finally gone. And the amount of uh, active RNA pulse also decrease. But nucleus, most nucleus of motion increase like this. So chromatin is less constrained in the G0 cell, uh, which is transcriptionally less active state. Okay. And again, consistent with our notion. So this is a model for for constrained chromatin motion. Uh, some high C papers said so many stable uh, promoter enhancer interactions are kept by active RNA pol 2. Okay, so this green uh, chromatin domains, including uh, promoter enhancers, are connected by active RNA pol 2 and possibly other uh, transcription factors and form this hub, this pink sphere, and this uh, constraint nucleus of motion. Okay, and once this hub breaks down by inhibitor treatment or knockdown, and constraint reduced and increased chromatin motion. So this is our model. And to test our model, uh, as a collaboration with the Sasai-san at Nagoya University, so we performed the uh, molecular, uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulation, a uh, brain dynamic simulation. Okay, so this is sort of a uh, toy model, but still very useful. And here, and uh, chromatin domain, so this green balls, uh, containing Hakiro-based genome was connected uh, by in invisible springs and uh, RNA pol active RNA pulse work as a glue, okay? And very weakly bind to the hub, this pink sphere, and mediate transient interaction between hub and chromatin domains. And as you see, the chromatin domain motion increased without active RNA pole 2. So consistent with our experimental result and our model. Okay. And so far, uh, I have shown the active RNA pole 2 constrained chromatin motion. Okay. And next, our question is, does RNA pole 1 also constrain RDNA regions? Here. Yeah, uh, so in my uh, later part of this talk, I'll uh, explain my story on this one. And Satoru Ide-san uh, in my lab, 
address this question. And for this, so we fluorescently labeled RDN region uh, with hollow tag UBF, uh, which relatively stably bind to RDN chromatin. Okay. So with the inhibitor treatment of uh, a space, uh, RNA pole one, so this uh, RDNA DNA motion uh, increase very significantly, like this. So this is consistent with uh, previous result uh, because it's known active RN pole one also form cluster, okay? And our results suggest this uh, clustering can constrain RDNA chromatin. And uh, with the inhibitor treatment, this cluster breaks down and uh, increase chromatin motion. So pretty similar to the RNA pole two case, okay? But in the case of uh, RNA pole one, more interesting thing happen. So because uh, nucleolus is a multi-phase droplet uh, formed by liquid-liquid phase separation, LLPS. So with LLPS, some macromolecules are concentrated to form liquid droplets, okay? and some uh, some other molecules are excluded. Okay, so this system is very useful for uh, spatial and temporal regulation of the function. Okay, so in the nucleolus, the transcription happened, this fibrillar center, FC, these dark blue regions, okay? And inhibitor treat, with inhibitor treatment, so this, this FC region and the red DFC region are reorganized into very large uh, droplets called nuclear caps, okay? And next question is what happened uh, in the cap droplet, so after inhibitor treatment, okay? And to address this question, so we tagged the RNA pole one with hollow tag. Okay. And during transcription and pole one and RDNA region, so their motion looks very similar, very constrained because they form complex. And with inhibition, transcription inhibition, so pol one dissociate from RDNA region and move very rapidly in the cap droplets here. And RDNA region also uh, motion increase in the, in this region. Okay. And interestingly, we found very similar things happened uh, with expression of mutant RNA pol one which is associated with a human genetic disorder, this E593Q mutant. Expression of this mutant pol one severely suppressed uh, ribosome RNA transcription and induced the uh, cap droplet formation like this, so very similar to the inhibitor treatment. And again, so what happened in this cap droplets? And we found, so mutant pole one compete with the viral type pole one and increased uh, motion of RDNA regions and viral type pole one in this droplet, okay? So essentially similar, similar to the inhibitor treatment, 
But in the case of mutant expression, uh, one essential initiation factor was excluded from the droplet. Okay. This is quite interesting. And yeah, this system is something like transcriptional suppression with phase, phase separation. Okay. So this is take home message slide. The first message is active RNA pole two and one constrained uh, chromatin. We think uh, this is for efficient transcription. So in the case of active RNA pole two, after knockdown, this hub breaks down and constraint reduced and increased chromatin motion. So this is first message. And second message. So as I showed you, the local chromatin dynamics reflect the chromatin environment in living cells. So uh, nucleosome motion analysis provides a new insight into the chromatin organization. So dynamics analysis is so important. That's second message. Okay. So at last, uh, I'd like to thank all my collaborators listed here and Ryosuke Nagashimaku, my former PhD student, was a main contributor, so with the help of Hibinosa. And Satoru Ide-san performed the later part of my story, so um, RDNA and RDPOL1 story. And the AID system was a collaboration with Kanemaki-san collaboration with Kanemaki-san, and Kimura-san gave us uh, good serine 5 phosphorylation antibody, and Sasai-san's group performed Brownian dynamics simulation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I was very happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Maishima, for that uh, very insightful look into your, into your work as well as uh, the work that has contributed to it. So if you'd like to ask uh, questions, do you feel free to post them uh, via the YouTube live comment box and yeah. I'll pass them on to Professor Mayashima. Uh, alternatively, if you are on Zoom, uh, do you feel free to either unmute or and ask your questions directly or to post them to me via uh, the Zoom chat. So perhaps I'll start off with a question about um, the coupling of your research to high C. So I know that there's some work being done regarding coupling uh, single, uh, single cell high C of a particular cell to imaging for that mm -hmm. one cell. Is that mm -hmm. something that you're looking to do as well? Ah, <laughs> always, yeah, single nucleosome imaging and combining genomic, genomics data yeah, it's really fantastic issue. The, yeah, definitely we are very much interested in the connection. Um, but high C based on the fixed cells mm -hmm. <laughs> and then cannot do live cell imaging. So we need some very specific probe to bind to specific genome sequence and then can see the dynamics of the region and then we can compare the high C data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking more of uh, starting off with imaging and then going on to high C yeah. of that same cell, um, which I think is, but again, it, it, it's an interesting idea to, as he said, to combine these techniques. Um, I also have a question from the YouTube chat from Jacob. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. If I understood correctly, less chromatin motion means more transcription. And the question is, does this give evidence against chromatin looping where enhancers have to bend matters, an example of motion, to target genes in, in order to, for transcription to take place? Uh, but the promoter enhancer interaction also can sort of stabilize chromatin motion itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's quite consistent. Hmm? 
but uh, could you explain a bit more? Um, so I, I think, I, I don't know if Jacob would like to comment on this, but um, in my opinion, that explanation does make sense in that um, on the general nucleus scale, there might be a decrease in motion that these promoter uh -huh. enhancer interactions could be localized. So they could uh -huh. be local mo motions that uh -huh. are perhaps not as easily represented on that general average view of motion. Ah, okay, okay, I see. So we, uh, our point is uh, chromatin constraint by transcription machinery is one of them. So there are many other constraint factors. Yeah. Yeah, for, for example, cohesion, one of famous uh, chromatin molecule complex also constrained chromatin motion. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So to understand more, so we need very specific uh, approach. Yeah. To, and one one factor we do, uh, remove, and then what happened with mm -hmm. the motion, and this kind of systematic approach is required to for the better understanding for what happened <laughs> in the yeah. chromatin organization. Mm -hmm. So it's about tackling specific factors that yeah. modulate chromatin. Yes. Uh, another question from Hen Chan on YouTube. Are there any particular functions for the less constrained chromatin when transcription is off? Any particular uh, function? functions? Yeah. Ah, okay. So you mean slow down um, uh, for the transcription? Okay, why the with the active iron pole two and the motion decrease? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so the point. That's that chromatin when it's less constrained and when transcription is off. Is there a particular reason for it? Ah, okay, so if if the um, less constrained, so that means the more molecule, so the chromatin dynamics increase. That mm. means. Uh, more, more molecule can interact or can penetrate or can bind. So that means that, so if off state, the transcription factor can, how to say, search more easily mm -hmm. to the target. Yeah. That's one factor we think. Mm -hmm. So one it's about reason. rendering that chromatin accessible to activation. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So ne for, for next activation, it's more mm -hmm. easy to target. Yeah. We have one more question. We have a few questions from Zoom chat. Uh, if chromatin dynamics doesn't increase transcription as was thought earlier, what is the significance of understanding dynamics? That is, what other processes might be tied to chromatin dynamics? Mm-hmm. So, so um, I cannot get the point. <laughs> Could um, you repeat again? If chromatin dynamics doesn't increase transcription, what is the significance of understanding that dynamics? That is. Uh, what do you what other processes do you think influence chromatin dynamics as well as transcription? What do you think affects it? Ah, okay, so affects because uh, many constrained factors can mm -hmm. affect, for example, uh, uh, as I said, uh, cohesion molecule and in heterochromatin region, the HP1 yeah. also can work uh, for the cross thinking. Uh, of the chromatin, and many of these kind of factors can affect chromatin dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll also, I'll also send you the question if there's anything that you think uh, would be also relevant to answering that question. Um, but before that, um, there's one more question from, uh, we've also had some thanks from uh, the YouTube live stream. And there's another question from Zoom. Uh, do you know, or does anyone know why that 
uh, RNA polymerase one mutation lead to uh, craniosculeal phenotype in particular. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. So your voice just stopped. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll repeat. So we had one okay, more okay. question. I see. Uh, so should... Why the mutation leads to the, the phenotype of genetic mm -hmm. disorder? Yeah. Okay. So that's the mutation worked as a dominant negative way. So that means that normally not so much problem, but in some, some cell population need more uh, ribosomal transcription, then inhibition happen. So that means that essentially, so suppress the uh, ribosomal uh, RNA transcription, that means that less ribosome production, mm -hmm. <laughs> then produce, uh, induce the defect in the cell, such cells. Then some um, developmental ad ad uh, abnormality happened. Mm -hmm. That's our explanation. So it's a mutation that, so is it a mutation that's uh, perhaps? Yeah, that's, so mutation, induce the transcription suppression mm -hmm. and then this lead to the uh, reduced number of ribosomes mm -hmm. and uh, affect the protein production and then defect appeared yeah. in some cell population mm -hmm. so this then make phenotype so this, um, I think what the person was asking, was this reduced uh, population of ribosomes localized to particular areas of the body affected by? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And there's another question uh, on the Zoom chat. Does the chromosome scaffold actually exist? So chromosome scaffold exists? That's yeah. Ah, uh, I think yes, especially in mitotic chromosomes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so long time ago, so we showed the, this chromosome scaffold consists of a whole set of condensing. Mm -hmm. And essentially the condensing work as a scaffold. Yeah. But it's not the same as that classical model where you have 200 nanometer loops of chromatin? Yeah, but uh, at the base of the loop, mm -hmm. so condensing exists. Yeah. And then consistent to, yeah, our, our finding is consistent with uh, very old work, mm -hmm. I think. So it's building Just upon... the scaffold was just con was condensing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, and okay. thank you everyone for uh, asking uh, questions during this talk. Um, I'm sure Professor Mayashima will be happy to answer any other questions that you might have. So do you keep on uh, posting them in the chat. Uh, meanwhile, if I may ask one more question of my own, in that experiment um, where you removed using the auxin induced Degron system, where you removed RNA uh, polymerase two, um, I'm not sure whether I misunderstood the experiment, but what about endogenous RNA pol two in that organism? But the uh, ah uh, oh, okay okay I see. So AI, AID tag was um, AID domain was tagged with endogenous RNA pol two mm -hmm. in both loci. Yeah. The all the all the RNA pol two have AID domain. Mm -hmm. So there were no um, examples of. Okay, that, so there were no examples of endogenous uh, RNA, RNA pol two left over yes. in that particular yes. structure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And maybe also um, in regarding the whole concept of there being hubs of polymerases, 
how does this relate to, I think it was an idea that was qu quite popular around 10, 15 years ago, the idea of transcriptosomes. So uh, phase separated compartments where transcription took place. Do so you think that this is an example of such a compartment? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our finding is consistent with very old transcription factory model. Yeah. <laughs> and also current, uh, yeah, droplet formation by transcription, transcriptionary fac machineries. Okay, so yeah. yeah, we think that our finding is consistent with both old and new ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if anyone else has any questions on YouTube or the Zoom chat, do send them in. And if not, uh, I'll conclude this talk by uh, thanking Professor Maishima for giving up his time, even though it's quite late in Japan. Ah, thank you very much. So and, very much enjoyed. <laughs> and thank you so much to everyone who joined us uh, at 11 in the morning um, when it's always lunchtime. Uh, thank you for asking so many questions. And thank you as well for coming to Biosup Talks this term for joining us despite this difficult situation. Um, so thank you for that insight into the dynamics of chromatin and into why it's important and how uh, chromatin models have evolved through the ages and how what we may have, what we may read in textbooks may not be an accurate model into how chromatin dynamics actually works, which is very important into looking at the nature of our genome and the genome of all organisms into how this dynamics relates to both transcriptional activity and how it's influenced by other factors. So once again, thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Professor Maishima, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much.